Good day everyone and we meet yet again and by the way um, we are still working really hard to try and make sure that you um, pass those uh, prelim exams as well as the final exams okay so today I wanted to just take a question on electrodynamics okay I know it's um, you know it's one of those relatively easy sections but you know it's worth reminding uh, remembering you know some uh, concepts when it comes to the application of it so yes if you haven't subscribed please just be part of the family make sure to hit that subscribe button and please make sure that you also have uh, you know those thumbs up you know to just give us some encouragement okay and by the way um, for those of you who need assistance with tutoring all right please make sure that you can send an email okay to info at mlungisinkosi.com co.za all right please just make sure that uh, uh, you mention whether you want help with physical science or mathematics all right now let's get right into the question all right so um, we're saying so in electrodynamics they've given us uh, the diagram below shows the essential parts of a generator so they have told us this is definitely a generator right so they say the coil rotates within the magnetic field okay so we know this is a generator um and by the way uh, you can tell because we've got those split ring uh, uh, commutators okay we know that it would actually turn in half cycles isn't it okay so they say write down the type of current that you uh, the, the type of current ac or dc okay induced in the coil so which means the current that is here now because this guy turns in half cycles so it means that the current would actually move back and forth over here right so as a result the type of current that you'd have there would be uh, ac within the, the the coil itself okay it will be uh, it will alternate and then but uh, however you know um the current that you'd have outside um would be dc okay remember when you've got those um uh, the those the split ring commutators i showed you how to you know in the video that we had on electrodynamics that when you've got uh, uh, you know uh, split ring commutators you can look at that as cd and when you once you think cd then you know it's dc right so in this case when you've got uh, split ring then you know that it's a um it's a dc uh, generator that you have okay right and then they say um um the one that is passing through the 20 ohm resistor okay uh in this case we know that uh it's going to be a dc current okay why and obviously because we've got those split ring commutators okay right so they say an ac generator is used in the commercial production of electricity okay and by the way that's a fact okay ascom does use uh, ac generators the kind of electricity that we use in our homes is uh, ac but now they say to us state one fundamental difference in construction between the ac generator and the dc generator so what would be the difference it would be those commutators right that ac right remember that we know that ac generator would have what your slip rings okay whilst dc would have split ring commutators okay and that's the fundamental difference between the two okay and uh, the next question they say fully explain why ac is preferred okay um for transmission of electricity over long distances now th there are three reasons essentially why uh, ac is more preferable okay so what do we know about ac current so first of all we know that it is essentially uh, it minimizes transmission losses okay so it's actually cheaper to use all right so in this case it's more economic okay so it's more economic to use uh, uh, ac all right um, why because it minimizes uh, transmission losses so it minimizes transmission losses um, all 
right? Um, uh, losses, right? Uh, sorry for writing in such an ugly way there. So in this case, we know that it minimizes transmission losses. And then as another uh, fact is that it can be stepped up and down. So in this case, what ESCOM actually does, okay, you'd uh, be able to send a huge amount of potential difference, okay, and a small amount of current, and it just keeps being stepped down, right? Uh, so it can be stepped up or down, okay? So, um, and then thirdly, uh, we know that um, the, the last one, okay? Uh, so we said it minimizes transmission losses, so it's more economic to use, okay? Uh, it can be stepped up or down. And the last one is that it is environmentally friendly, right? So uh, in this case, because it can be sent over long distances, okay, uh, you can afford now to have, you know, the where electricity is produced, you can actually put it as far away from, um, you know, residential areas as possible and be able to send it, um, you know, uh, from a remote place. So in this case, it's environmentally friendly. And so those are the fundamental uh, benefits of having AC over DC. Now, quickly, let's go through the next question. All right. So that has to do with uh, the calculations that have to do with this section. So I'm going to put this aside. OK, so that you can see that question. Right. So um, in this case, they say the diagram below. So we can see they've given us a waveform there uh, shows the output of a generator. A 20 ohm resistor is connected to the circuit. Right. Now, first thing that I know, what type of a generator would that be? It would be an AC generator, right? And they've given me the time there. And then they say to you, calculate the frequency of the source, okay, of the power source. So how would I get or how would I obtain the frequency? If you look at that, they gave me the period. Now, please remember, what is the period? It is the time taken to complete one cycle, all right? So one cycle can be completed in 0 0.02, okay? So then I can say, well, frequency is actually 1 over the period, okay? Because that's, the, that's one cycle divided by the time to complete that one cycle, in this case, which is... 0.02 so that's 1 divided by 0 0.02 and that would give us okay um, um, that would give us 50 hertz okay so our frequency there would be 50 hertz right and then the last question they say calculate the average power dissipated in the resistor Okay, remember we've got a resistor of 12 of 20 ohms, okay, and we want to find the average power. Now, remember we've got three uh, equations for power. The first one says P average is VRMS. Now, remember that every time we talk about average power, we use our RMS values, right? And the second one says P average is IRMS squared divided by, uh, sorry multiplied by r and the last one says to calculate the average power you say vrms squared divided by r okay so those are three formulas so which one are we going to pick well definitely we need one that has resistance right so it will be between the two but what else do we have um, they've given us the voltage but uh, in this case the only thing that's indicated is the maximum voltage. So what would I do? I need to convert that maximum voltage into RMS voltage. So first thing, let's calculate VRMS. And we know that VRMS is Vmax divided by the square root of 2, right? So I'm going to say, well, uh, that's going to be my Vmax value is 200 divided by the square root of 2, okay? 
uh, and I get a value of uh, 141.4. So that's 141.42 volts. That's my RMS value. But I've also got the resistance. So I'm going to use this one to calculate the average power. So it's going to be P average is going to be V RMS squared, sorry, RMS squared over R. So this is going to be 141.42. Remember, it is squared divided by my resistance, which is 20. Okay, so let's get that value. So that's going to be squared. Uh, and we divide that by 20. And I get a thousand watts. Please remember that average power, power is measured in watts, right? So in this case, our final answer is going to be a thousand watts. And essentially, that's how the cookie crumbles, right? Um, easy as that. You've gotten yourself 15 marks. Uh, just by knowing uh, those fundamental things. Okay, so I hope that has been helpful. Okay, as you revise, please just make sure that you uh, also get our uh, algorithm going. Okay, just to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, we keep producing this fine content for you. All right, so and if you have questions, please, you're more than welcome to just put on the comment side and just tell us uh, if there are things that you need clarity on. Otherwise, Thank you so much, ladies and gents, and I will see you again next time. Shop, shop.